thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Amanda Harlan, and my talk is called Architecting Communities. I'm definitely not an expert, but I learn a lot from people like Nick and Zach and other Nebraskans and Missourians, Kansans, I don't know if these are the right words, but <laughs> they are they are an amazing community. I'm only speaking as myself today, but I stand on the shoulders of giants. I learned everything I know from these people. Um, they contribute to Tecklehoma as board members. Uh, they also run user groups and conferences. They do a lot of open source work also for our nonprofit. So what is Tecklehoma? It's a 501c3 that we started last year because we care about community. And this talk, I'm going to be sharing some lessons that we've learned as an open source tech scene. So we're all about advancing Oklahoma's grassroots technology community. And this is our mission statement. Um, and we're on the topic of Oklahoma, so I'll tell y'all what we're about. Um, in 2011, we had some tech groups, and they were starting to kind of fizzle out. The community wasn't as engaged as they'd been before. It was really hard to get involved if you wanted to volunteer or start a new group. I mean, it wasn't transparent of how to engage. In 2011, it wasn't a totally bad year. We had uh, our very first JavaScript conference called Red Dirt JS. And luckily, some people let me volunteer for that, take notes. And uh, I got to learn a lot from Derek and Vance. So the next year, we started thinking about a community-driven conference. It was a really good experience for us. And Jesse and Vance saw that there was a JavaScript scene happening, and we needed to help it grow. So they started OKCJS. We had our very first meeting in January, which is like two months after Red Dirt. We had 72 people show up, and we were absolutely amazed. Uh, a few months later, I helped start Code Club to teach and empower women. And um, the other groups, they were still going through some pains. Red Dirt JS didn't happen this year, but we wanted to keep this kind of community-filled development going. 2013, things were looking up. Uh, OKC JS was doing great. We had a couple new groups form, like Code for Tulsa, OKC Ruby, Game Devs. Our central meeting location actually dissolved. Uh, we, we couldn't meet there anymore, and this was like a real concern we had never foreseen. Um, we had a lot of wins this year. It was uh, like 200 OK in Tulsa, which was our second JavaScript conference and amazing name. I'm really, really jealous. Uh, <laughs> Thunder Plains also met for the first time. And you know, it was, it was our first time organizing. We're not experts, but we want to treat people as our friends. So that's what we did. Um, 2014 was even better. We had at least six new groups form this year because we could scaffold user groups. We found our best practices and we could share it. Uh, the next meeting space we'd met at for a year also went away. Um, it's a continual struggle for us. Uh, we started meeting at a makerspace, which has kind of uh, connected hardware and software communities. It's uh, a really nice benefit of this. Tulsa and OKC started talking, and we learn a lot from them. And our user group leaders, they all started talking to each other, too. When we share resources, we really grow. So now we're at 2015, and this is a compilation of lots of things that we've learned. Like, what we do matters. We started seeing more tech jobs in Oklahoma. More companies started moving in. Uh, they asked for better technology, and it kind of kept our job market competitive. Our community was really growing as developers. We, we knew we had to organize. We had to cooperate. But to make a better community, we needed to learn from our craft. We took best practices from software architecture and ported that to architecting communities. In terms of software architecture in our daily life, we use core activities, methodologies, disciplines, and tools to build software, like designing and maintaining software and using Agile and Scrum. We do UX and QA, and we write docs, hopefully. It's <laughs> <laughs> right to docs. Um, <laughs> and uh, we use tools like Kanban boards and source control. And I, I love Kanban boards. They're awesome to-do lists, and they keep you on track. It is, it is the truth. Um, community architecture, we found, needed the same tools. 
it just took us a while to realize that every skill we have learned as architects can be ported to communities. So much like a dev following solid, we wanted guidelines to follow and kind of examine ourselves by. We deliberated on what kind of community we wanted to build, and that created Trail. So Trail encapsulates some of our most important guidelines, like transparency. Does your community have a, a way for our users to talk to you? Do they have a voice? Can they engage in your group's plans and issues? If you need help, do they know how to help? Are your channels open? Do people feel like they can talk to you about the group's future or how to improve? And the vision shared by the community leadership, this needs to be public and accessible. People want to know what your goals are and what your hopes and dreams and feelings for the future are. Um, not to get all mushy. Uh, we care about group relevancy. And we want to know things like, is your material up to date? You don't have to do a whiz topic every month. But also, you might not present on topics from three years ago. Or ironic libraries every month. That is not a, that's not a problem for us, at least. Um, oh my gosh, did you guys see that? <laughs> Whoops. Um, our tech scene uses uh, some particular technology. Some of it's a little older. Some of it's a little more enterprisey, but we know we need to train people on best practices for this. We can't ignore it. So we want to keep groups relevant and help people use this right now at their job. We want to help people kind of push forward with tech too. Something that will help them get a job right now, also in a year. We want them to stay up to date with libraries and frameworks and awesome build tools, um, totally important. And uh, employers, they notice this. They'll start using better processes, better tooling. Developers will come back and say, hey, we can solve this with Gulp. You know, work on whatever, broccoli for brunch. Um, do you work towards accessibility? And you know, when you hear accessibility, you think of things like ARIA and Ally and screen readers. And that is really important. You want to make sure that people can get to your parking, people can find your location. If you're meeting on a second floor, are there elevators? Do they work? Um, but also, you want your information to be accessible by using social media um, or like tweeting, sending emails. Can people rely on you for like a meeting update? Like, you want to make sure your mailing list knows when announcements happen, when your group meets, how to find out more information. And if you have a private email chain, which some groups do, I've totally seen this, um, it's hard to get involved. It's hard to know what's going on. If you don't have like the archives from July 2007, you know, he might be missing out. So another thing that's really important to us is inclusivity and making it a priority. We want people to think about who goes to your meetups. It might be students. Um, they might be at a VOTEC. Do you have any that go to high school? Do you have any new moms? Do they need to know that they can wear their kid? Um, you might think about hobbyists and beginners. You know, are they intimidated? Are they still attending? Um, and what do they need? Do they need specific topics? Do they need to know, just to know that they can show up and be OK? If diversity has been a topic that you've ignored, consider asking your community for help. They'll let you know what they need. Or if you start asking, eventually they will let you know what they need. Um, you got to build that trust first. We can't please everyone all the time. I mean, especially when it comes to scheduling and location and parking. But we can listen and improve. So longevity is our last uh, topic on this. We want to make sure that groups will stay around for the long haul. If, if they're with Techlahoma, we want to make sure that you won't fail in six months. We want to set you up for success. So if your leadership steps down or moves away, can your group continue to survive? Do you have processes in place to hand it over to someone easily? Um, or if you get burnt out, do organizers get burnt out? It is so true. You just need to be able to share your, your weight. I mean, the emotional weight of being an organizer, the stress of it, and distribute that work to other volunteers. When you are overwhelmed, 
This might be because you're not using volunteers enough. They are there to help you. Um, if you plan for the future, are you thinking about the language? Uh, you might choose an Ember group over, um, no, no, I take that back. You might choose a JavaScript group over an Ember group because your scene might not be big enough. You might not want these two competing ideas. You might just want a regular general developer group. That might be all you need. Um, and is your group survivable? You want to make sure that you're building the kind of community and the attitudes and environment that people want to keep coming back to, that they feel safe and included, and you know they're considered. Make people, make people feel considered. Um, another topic is now patterns that we've adopted. We use it uh, in regards to trail, like adopting a Git-based workflow. So this pattern is really awesome for transparency and accessibility and longevity. Just like our dev shops, we use source control, but we're using it for user group websites. We use it for community projects. Um, we use issue trackers on GitHub to discuss events and optimization. And one really unique thing that we do is use it for user um, permissions to manage teams. So we've got um, like a Java group, and they've got their own team. We've got OKCGS, and they've got their own team. And it's great. We can just add someone, remove someone, whatever you need. Uh, Git and GitHub are really great options for us because volunteers can get up to speed really fast. And if they weren't familiar, we trained them up. So they went back to work, and they were like, hey, can we get off TFS? <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, we work off issues, and it promotes open discussions, which has been really great for a community. Uh, newer devs, devs that are late to join, they can start engaging too and see what we're about. Wikis are also a great addition, but make sure you have an awesome readme with contributor guidelines and how to get started. Uh, and if you need to step down, Git-based workflow is awesome for handing over volunteer uh, duties. So this is what my GitHub looks like. Um, we've got OKCGS, Thunder Plains, our Tecklahoma websites, we've got tons of contributors, and they're awesome. Some of our issues for managing Thunder Plains um, they're not only website issues. Some of them are like, how do we optimize a sign-in table? We also have a pull request uh, based volunteer engagement. This is Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. Um, and we use wikis. We have team management, like I mentioned earlier. We also import tools and ideas from Agile. We use a Kanban board to delegate tasks, and it's really nice if you can identify blocks. We monitor task completion. If we need something done, we can set a, a date. It needs to be done. They'll get a reminder. If we can improve in areas, Kanbans kind of help us find it. And we use Trello um, in particular to discuss ideas, like how do we make our stuff better? How do we make our conference better? How do we make our group better? Um, this is an example of a Trello for a group. It was for their very first meeting, some ideas they needed. like. I put like stickers on a code of conduct and stuff. Um, we also take inspiration in polymorphic design patterns. We try to avoid duplicating effort. Uh, we create websites once and then share it with other groups. We reuse a community code of conduct. And we even share physical objects like chairs and projectors um, and screens at our singular meeting location. That way, we don't have to repeat ourselves so much. We also avoid singletons. Uh, we ask that groups have at least three organizers to become an official group. And leaders are polymorphic in that they can update any other group's website. And they can even fill in for another leader. So the main point is that after a few years, we realized it is optimal to scaffold new groups with our best practices. Repeated effort is unnecessary effort. And information security. I mean. You might not be thinking about this. This is also important. When you have a one singular person with a personal account sign up for Meetup or Twitter, that becomes an information silo. And that, that account is tightly coupled to that one person. If they leave, you are cut off from these accounts. So we use a password manager and super user accounts. We also don't share email lists or personal information. That's also super important. We adopt style guides. 
Um, a code of conduct is the ultimate style guide. It helps you establish behavior, expectations, and you know what an organizer will do to protect you and unsafe events and what the community is kind of all about. But a code of conduct isn't the only be-all, end-all. You need to be that behavior first and show your community what it should look like. You have to be a leader and show them they will reflect whatever you do. Um, an actual for real style guide. That's also really nice if you have a group website or if it's like Teclahoma and we have multiple Teclahoma projects. We have a singular repo for style guides if they want to partake in it. Um, here's that repo actually. And here is code of conduct, like actual behavior style. We also use uh, linters. And a side note, I just learned this the other day. You can use Slackbot for speech. So if you want to have a style guide for ways to have more inclusive speech, you can do it. You can take out like ableist terms and place guys with y'all, which I am totally all about. Um, and here are some of our entry patterns. So Socrates said, the unexamined code base isn't worth merging. <laughs> and I think what he meant is that you really, <laughs> you need to think about what's in your code base. You need to have reviews. You need to talk about it. What's going on? What do you accept? I mean, we need this for our community, too. First one, email blasts. <coughs> this sucks. Um, it's not inclusive by nature if it's a hidden email. I, you know, I mean, we have a MailChimp account, but if it's one of those old school ones where it's hard to sign up, if you have group discussions in it, it really prohibits transparency of your group. It's difficult to search. Uh, it's not really accessible information. And if you can imagine it, if you ran a shop with no issue tracker and only chain mail, everyone would quit. I would quit. Um, this is not the 90s. Uh, sales pitch meetups, if you want to sell out, this is a great option. Um, <laughs> so these meetings are irrelevant, and what's being sold isn't necessarily in your group's best option. It's non-authentic. Uh, no one wants to go to a sales pitch. It kind of hurts longevity. It hurts relevancy. And I don't want another keychain. Please stop it. Um, Triple XL t-shirts, um, I'm done with nightgowns. Please stop it. Um, don't sell out your user group. This is different if you come from a place of finding a product or a way to solve a problem and you're sharing it. But if, if you're a paid spokesperson, like, just don't. Um, my most controversial topic, alcohol. Oh, seriously. <laughs> I like beer. Uh, yeah. No, it's cool. Alcohol is fine. We don't serve it at our regular monthly meetups. We do serve it in a uh, controlled area at Thunder Plains, but there's also plenty of other non-alcoholic options. Um, interestingly enough, so Contra Hacks, this is Eric Schofstall. He helped create Gulp, um, Fractal, uh, Genome.js. This dude is amazing, and he said, I just recently turned 21, but it always sucked not being able to get into conference after parties, especially as a speaker who flew out. For six years, I couldn't go to any after parties because they were always at bars with bouncers at the doors. This dude is wicked smart. He knows so much about code, and he's speaking at your conference, but he can't go to the after party. Like, What does this say about us? This idea that alcohol and code are tightly coupled is wrong. I mean, we wouldn't do like JavaScript and guns, like <laughs> come out to the gun range, choo choo. Maybe we would, I don't know. Um, Saltine Justine, she has some awesome tweets on this. She said, don't jeopardize the happiness of most of your attendees for the party fun aspect. It's a conference, not your 21st birthday party at the pub. Um, I, I totally respect that. You want to make sure that people don't feel like it's as 
trivial thing. They want to code. They want to hang out with people that code. They want to have fun and be included. But they like, you know, get in your like, dress wet when someone spills drinks on you. That sucks. I know everybody in here wears dresses. Um, so when we have this kind of idea of tightly coupled uh, meetup groups in alcohol, we exclude a lot of people. So some people might be recovering from addiction under 21, like Contra, or Guillermo Rausch. He uh, created Socket.io, and he spoke at Red Dirt JS. And days before this conference, I turned 21. Guillermo had like another week to go. And we were like, oh, gosh, can he get in here? It's totally ridiculous. We can't do that. Um, pregnant woman, maybe you don't want to tell people you're pregnant. Maybe you do. Who cares? Um, <laughs> but you know, they can't drink. Like, make sure you like have water and tea and like soda. We have Capri Sun. Come get some. Um, religious members, some people can't consume alcohol. Some of them can't consume coffee or tea. So keep keep a lot of ideas around of how to make them feel included. You don't want to like have a situation where they're like hanging out at the bar with their mocktail and you know. Don't put that pressure there in the first place. Make sure they know it's okay to not like show up to party. Or Guillermo Rausch puzzles and like apple cider. So I don't know if we're crude, but do it. No, it's fun. I for real, it's fun. Um, if you have a low tolerance for alcohol, like maybe you just don't want to get totally blasted. You know, you're left out. Or people that just don't like how it tastes. They can't actually consume it genetically. All these people we, we forget about. On the topic of addiction, there's some awesome Model View Culture blog post on this. And Saltine Justine said, do we want to punish people who have been brave enough to admit that they have a problem by excluding them from all of our events and activities? This is a great point. These people are our community, and they exist, and we need to make sure that they're safe. So. 25% of American women have experienced sexual assault. Half of those cases have involved alcohol. This is a clear concern for, I mean, just reconsideration. Let's just reconsider the amount we have. I'm not saying strip away all alcohol from everything. Just be mindful of the dangers drinking culture has as the forefront of our industry. So. Sorry to get so controversial on y'all. Um, and my conclusions are, take ideas from software and use Trail for your own community. It's like solid but awesome. Um, embrace your responsibility as community stewards and keep learning and keep sharing. I wanna learn from you. Tweet me at Amanda Harlan if you got stuff to say. Cool, thanks for your time. <laughs>